Today, I want to provide a brief overview of the Culver calibration procedure of the Mito and Pluto current controlled series screwdrivers when used in conjunction with the EDUAE Top and Top Tia series controllers by Culver. The most important thing to have on hand for this testing is a calibrated torque tester. And for this demo, I'm using the K5 series torque tester. What we're basically trying to do is teach the controller how to represent the numeric value found on the torque tester onto the controller's screen. As a default, the controller will display a torque percentage screen, which is basically just the percentage of torque within the range of each screwdriver's model. So if the range is from 4 inch pounds to 26 inch pounds, this should represent an actual torque setting somewhere in between. What we're going to do here is hold the escape button and go into the program setting menu. We want to make sure that we're on the correct program because there's eight programs in the top and TIA series controllers. I'm working with program one. I want to scroll down and make sure that the correct model of the screwdriver is set. I am using a Pluto 6 for my testing, which appears to be correctly selected in the controller. So I'm all set on that end. The next thing I want to do is go down and pay attention to two important factors. The first is the torque percentage setting that we mentioned before. As you can see, it's currently set to 20%. The second key setting is the RPM value. It's important to know that the RPM does directly affect torque output. So what we want to do is manipulate both of those settings and do a little bit of light testing with our torque tester to make sure that we're seeing the output torque value that best suits our application needs. Once we have found our ideal output torque value, we can begin the actual calibration process by scrolling down to the calibration setting. As you can see, pressing OK will turn the calibration on. At this point, we will be setting the calibration interval with a minimum and maximum percentage values. What we're trying to do is build a window around the actual target torque, typically 5 or 10% below and above our target torque. If you remember, our target torque percentage earlier came out to be 20%. So I'm going to set the minimum value to 10%. Then we will click the OK button here, and it's going to ask us to start a test. At this point, I typically run a series of about 5 rundowns and take the average of the output values I see on the tester's screen. For the purposes of this demo, we'll just do one rundown. I have found that my rundown equates to 15 inch pounds of output torque as shown on the torque tester, and I'm going to input that value here inside the controller. Now, moving on to step 2, I will input the maximum percentage. Again, what I'm going to do is go 10 percentage points above my target torque of 20%, and this is going to allow me to teach the controller a representation of the numeric value above the target torque. And as you can tell, we're just building a window so the system can understand how to represent that value correctly. So once again, I'm going to do a series of rundowns. What I'm finding for a torque reading is about 23 inch pounds. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to go ahead and enter that value. Once I'm done, you'll see that the calibration is complete. Let's hit Escape and go back out to the Run menu so we can test our accuracy. As you can observe here, we still see our torque percentage, but now we have this T which will show us the numeric value on the left hand side. So if I go and do my rundown, now what I should be seeing in the controller's screen is an output torque value close to what the torque tester displays. My target torque is about 19 inch pounds, so I'm very happy seeing an output of 18.9 on the controller's display. Let's try another rundown here. I'm seeing 18.9 inch pounds again, so I'm pretty happy with this. The output is right on target. Here's one thing that you can do if the torque value you're seeing on the controller isn't matching up as closely as you would like with the value shown on the torque tester. Go back into the program setting menu. Scroll down to compensation and you can slightly manipulate the actual value that's going to be shown on the display screen, whether it's a little bit lower or a little bit higher. One of the very important things to understand with current controlled systems is the following. If you are going to make any significant changes to the torque percentage or to the speed setting, you really do need to go back through and recalibrate the program. Because once again, you are teaching a window around your target torque. The other important factor to understand is with the top and TA series controllers is that these are eight program controllers. Usually with the eight programs, you'll have a different torque setting, perhaps a different RPM setting for each of the programs that apply to your application. And so the calibration procedure you just did for program number one is not really appropriate to carry over to the other programs. Therefore, you do have to go back through and quickly calibrate the programs that you're planning to use in order for the controller to display the accurate torque value for each. 
I hope this helps. If you'd like to see a demo, learn more about the product line or have any questions please feel free to contact us at Culver at CulverUSA.com or visit our website at www.culverusa.com.